And when you look at what happens in health benefits, that's just one good example. This union has decided that everyone they represent is entitled to free medical, dental, and vision benefits for themselves and their families from the day they are hired until the day they die. Now, listen, you may think I'm exaggerating, but I am not. In the main in New Jersey, neither the members nor their union pays a penny towards their health care. Not a penny. Now, that's a pretty sweet deal. And I can't think of any other job where the employer says, well, listen, don't worry about your health insurance. We'll just throw that in no matter what it costs. And in fact, pick whatever plan you like. In fact, take the most expensive one. We won't even give you a choice. Let's take the Cadillac plan and give it to you. Uh, I don't understand why the teachers union understand that while everybody else in New Jersey and across the country is paying for a part or all of their health insurance, that we should have to pay for all of theirs. It simply doesn't make common sense. It's a question of fairness. I'm not asking them to pick up 100% of their premiums. I'm not even asking them to pick up 50% of their premiums. In fact, I haven't even asked them to pick up 25% of their premiums, even though that's what I paid as a federal employee, and all federal employees pay 25% of premium across the entire country. I'm not even asking them for 10%. I asked them to pay 1.5% of their salary towards their health benefits. 1.5%. Now, for the average teacher that makes $55,000 a year in New Jersey, we're talking about $825 annually for full family medical, dental, and vision coverage. That's less than $69 a month. Now, in the private sector, this is a deal that employees would run each other over to get. <laughs> the response of the teachers union? This is the gravest attack on public education in the history of the world. <laughs> now, see, I don't get this because I don't understand why my child will learn better if they have the comfort of knowing <laughs> that their dear teacher is paying nothing towards their health benefits. I can't imagine your child coming home and saying, I can't study. I'm overwrought with anxiety. <laughs> Why? Why are you overwrought with anxiety? My teacher has to pay 1.5% of their salary for their health benefits. Come on, Dad, buck up. You pay it for them. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. It's laughable. Yet, you have the head of the teachers union on Saturday standing up at this rally saying, we are not the problem. There have never been more incorrect words spoken in front of the State House in Trenton, and that is a high bar, ladies and gentlemen, a high bar. Because I believe that most teachers, most teachers become teachers because they find it so rewarding. You know, they want to make a good living, they want to have financial security just like all the rest of us. But the difference between zero and 1.5 percent is not going to cause a dedicated teacher to leave the profession. It's not going to stop a kid in college who wants to be a teacher from joining the profession. I think when the union makes that argument, they sell their members and their profession extraordinarily short. And they may do that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to challenge teachers to be a part of the solution and to challenge their union. Now, we've had mixed success at that so far, but it doesn't mean I'm going to stop. So we need to give mayors and school board members the ability to negotiate a full menu of health benefits that folks can choose from at varying costs with varying kinds of coverage. Now, this isn't revolutionary. It happens, as you know, in the private sector every day. It's happening with federal employees. Why should state and local governments, government workers in New Jersey have a better deal than federal employees? They're all government workers. And federal employees seem to be doing just fine by paying that portion of their benefits. This is just restoring some common sense to a totally out of control system. And if you wonder how much it costs this year alone in New Jersey's budget, $823 million on retiree health benefits 
alone. That $823 million just on retiree health benefits. And you have the teachers union complaining about my $820 million cut to K-12 education. Uh, much of that cut wouldn't be necessary if people would start contributing towards their own health benefits like it's done in the rest of the civilized world outside of New Jersey. <laughs> pension reform is also necessary. And we've passed some pension reform already in New Jersey as it applies to future employees, but we need to get to the problem of present employees. Our pension system is $46 billion in deficit. Now, I want that pension to be there for the police officers, the firefighters, and the teachers who are counting on it for their retirement. Don't let anybody tell you that this problem is caused by the failure of our state to stand up to its commission to com commitment rather to fund these pensions. That's part of the problem, but it's not the whole thing. If the state had contributed every dollar it was supposed to over the last 10 years to the pension system, our pensions would be funded at 74 percent of their needed value. Today, they're valued at 64 percent. So what does that tell you? It tells you that our benefits are too rich and the employees are not contributing enough either. It's not just a problem of the state not making its contribution. So we need to make sure that we reform this pension system so that it's there for the folks who are depending upon it. And their unions are singing them the siren song that you can have it all. We can't. We can't have it all. Not in this economy, not with a burgeoning budget deficit, not with long-term debt when you combine pension and retiree health benefits that is over $100 billion. We can't do it. And we are careening our way towards becoming Greece. And I don't want New Jersey to be the textbook example for failed European economies. Now, I'll end with this so you can understand what's really at stake here. Last week, I had a town hall meeting in Hoboken, right across the river, and I talked to a family, a husband, a wife, and their three young boys, all under the age of 10. They had a property tax increase last year of $2,000, their increase. It's an incredible financial hit for any family to take, especially in one year. It's not as if you can go to your employer, especially in these economic times, and say, hey, I need another two grand. My property taxes went up. If cap two and a half had been in place for this family, Joe, Jennifer, their three boys, their property taxes would have gone up $213, not $2,000. Instead, as a result, for the first time, their property taxes now exceed the $10,000 a year mark. So instead of paying the mortgage or making a down payment on the car or saving for college or taking a vacation or just keeping up with what it costs to live in this region of the country, another $2,000 of their paycheck gets sucked up in that 10-year, 70% increase in property taxes. We're long past the point where politicians in Trenton can justify this kind of drain on a family's income, this kind of dampness on their hope for the future. With cap two and a half, there's only one way out if you want to raise taxes more than two and a half percent, and that is to put it on the ballot and let the voters decide. Now, they've done it in Massachusetts, and about half the time the voters say, you know what? It's worth me paying an extra point in taxes this year to have this new program, this new building, or to hire more police officers. The other half of the time, they say no. But the control is finally in the hands of the people and not the politicians who have messed up this system for the last 30 years.